Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from NumaScale. We have Einar Rusted. He is the CTO and co-founder of the company. Einar, how are you today? Well, thank you, Rich. Well, I'm fine yeah. so far. Thank you. So far, so good. Well, great. So far, so good. Yeah. Well, good. Well, Einar, you know, we, we have a presentation here, but, you know, this is about NumaScale, which we've, um, you know, we've had a few chats about it. But, uh, you know, as we were doing the lead up to the podcast, I mean, the point of doing something like NumaScale is really two things, isn't it? It's, it's about ease of programming and getting more performance. Yeah. So being able to do that at a reasonable price so you can combine, you know, high volume manufactured units into large machines that are, you know, shared memory, cache coherent, simple programming model, and all that. Yeah, and and so so with that, why don't we go into your slides and we'll do a Q and A at the end. Yeah, so you know, looking at you know the slide number two that depicts a, a standard cluster where you know each machine has a separate part of the uh, of the memory space and they're you know totally separate and have to communicate through explicit messages. So that's the typical MPI cluster uh, model. And uh, looking at the next slide, uh, trying to, to, to show how the shared memory approach works, where all the processors have a shared view of the entire uh, data set. So they can, you know, reach out, any processor can reach out to any part of the data at any given time and share everything. So, so that is the basic uh, concept. And, uh, Going more into a, a block diagram detail, looking at the cluster again and separate machines connected. Uh, this is on slide number four, by the way, um, connected to a network switch. And that could be Ethernet or InfiniBand or, or you know, any, any network uh, that would uh, give you a standard TCP IP or, or RDMA or whatever kind of, of um, in, interfacing. And everything has to do has to go through the network with with messages. Then we introduce our uh, NUMA Connect card at slide number five, showing the uh, NUMA chip, which is the uh, central part of this, is an ASIC that handles all the cache coherency logic and uh, connects into a hypertransport uh, a coherent uh, link that connects to the processors on the motherboard. And from that card, you have six connectors on the left side that connects to the fabric, which is just cables that cable these things up in three-dimensional torus topologies. And uh, then again on slide number six, you see the card inserted in a Supermicro 1042 uh, server. And uh, you can also see the six connectors there on the backside uh, getting out of that box. Um, on slide number seven, I show the uh, the uh, block diagram when this card is inserted into the system and uh, the memory and the caches and the CPUs are all working as one single system, one single shared memory system with, uh, with cache coherency all the way through. So any processor can reach out to any part of the memory at any given time. Also uh, do that with the I.O. So the I.O. devices can be connected to uh, multiple nodes and can give you a high aggregated bandwidth uh, in, in and out of the system. And so a little uh, picture here on slide number eight uh, from the backside of a 2D uh, wired system where the cables can be seen on the right hand side. So there's no central uh, fabric, uh, excuse me, no central switch, just a fabric that distributed switching that's all happening inside the NUMA chip. Uh, to give you that three-dimensional capability. Um, then again, on slide number nine, we show the detail of how the NUMA chip is connected to the uh, coherent hypertransport uh, onboard fabric and uh, mapping that coherency protocol into our global cache coherent protocol, taking this to uh, um, scale to a larger number of, of uh, nodes. And that is again then shown in slide number 10, where we show the two different, well, 2D and 3D uh, fabric wirings. And this, these are very expandable, so you can do smaller systems in 2D, you can do larger systems in 3D. 
and uh, the limit is uh, basically just due to a 12-bit address field that we have in, implemented in this version of the chip. So that's a 4K node capability. Um, slide number 11 shows a little bit of detail on the Taurus topologies again. And uh, uh, going again then to slide number 12, you can see that this does not necessarily have to be one single image system. It can be several partitions in the same fabric. And these can run uh, different instances of the operating system. If you want to, they can share memory uh, by uh, exporting memory and mapping it from uh, the remote uh, system to another system. Um, or you can have you know, everything in a single image. And the repartitioning takes place then at, at the boot time for the system. Um, slide number 13 shows how the traffic is routed in the fabric. This is a little simple diagram of a 2D version. So a CPU request will be routed uh, through the NUMA chip uh, into the um, destination node, if that is on a different ring. And uh, the response will then go back on a different route, again, uh, through uh, another NUMA chip routing it back to the, uh, to the uh, destination. And, and, you know, that gives you the ability to do rerouting and, and fault tolerance also to some point. The slide number 14 then shows a larger system. This is the one that we really did the stream benchmarking on. And the system has 108 such 1042 supermicro servers. And it's wired in six by six by three torus, 36 servers in each uh, cabinet. And uh, it's all connected in one single fabric. And uh, it has all in all, 5,184 cores. It has uh, 20.7 terabytes of memory, shared memory. And it can run a single instance of the OS. And that one managed to run 10 terabytes per second on the stream benchmark. As we shall show you in, the, in a minute on the slide number 15. So that's a printout of this run uh, that, you know, all in all was very close and above 10 point uh, zero terabytes per second for those uh, functions. And that put us on the top of the list for the McAlpin stream benchmark, actually. So I think that was a good good run. You can see that we actually did not use all the cores for this run because uh, it's actually it's better utilization of the memory channels to let one core run each memory controller. And avoiding arbitration between different cores, so so that that gives you the uh, the optimum uh, memory bandwidth. And then um, at the last slide here, I just show a few uh, you know key numbers. The uh, total address space of the system is 256 terabytes, uh, using all the 48 uh, physical address bits that the uh, Optron uh, produces. And it can be connected into 4K nodes and, you know, a large number of cores. So, yeah. So, so Einar, you've got this, this large-scale uh, stream benchmark. I mean, can you put that in perspective? I mean, what would a single node be able to do on something like that uh, stream? Oh, oh, that, that was a hard <laughs> question. Yeah. You have to... You basically have to divide by the number of nodes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I can, I can do that. We can do that. Uh, so you know it's it's very linear scaling, um, mm -hmm. not tot not totally of course because there is a little overhead. Yeah. But it's pretty linear. It's not ideal, but it's it's pretty close to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with the Numa scale, like as you said, this is a single system image, right? I mean, it, it's it's just one interface, uh, just like programming, uh, you know, uh, at, at the desk side level. Yeah. So. The normal thing is, of course, to use OpenMP. Uh -huh. um, you can use P threads. You know, you can use that. Well, you can use MPI also if you if you prefer that. But you know, that that's not necessary in in this case. Yeah. So, uh, but it performs excellent on on uh, on MPI as well. 
and then uh, I put this in perspective in the industry out there. I mean, there's other ways to get uh, you know big big shared memory systems. I is your advantage primarily cost or or bandwidth, or what would you say? What I would say is that it's first and foremost, I think it's the scalability of both cost and performance uh -huh. because we use. Uh, you know, we use the same components all over. It's not like you need to have a an entirely different system to go to another performance level. You just add more nodes and as you go. Yeah. And of course, the 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 practical limits here, uh, basically due to the operating system's ability to handle a single instance. And uh, I think the limit at today, I think we're very close to that with the 5,000 cores in this system. Um, Due to the, you know, there there aren't that many systems out there that has the, well, there are none actually out there except for this one that has this number of cores in a single system. Okay. Uh, so we're a little ahead of that for the, you know, uh, regarding the Linux uh, uh, kernel scalability actually. Yeah. And, and could you characterize this stream benchmark? I mean, what types of uh, applications might have a similar type of <coughs> a profile to this? Well, you know, applications that really require a lot of memory bandwidth that, mm -hmm. that do not have a lot of cache utilization. Yeah. So, so this is really to stress the uh, the memory bandwidth all the way to the to the main memory. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you don't get uh, any cache effects on on this one. So, so that's really what you're measuring. It's measuring uh, parallel memory bandwidth. So you get the aggregated bandwidth of all the memory controllers in the system. Well, terrific. So, so I know, are you guys going to be at uh, the IC15 conference showing this? The VR, Rich, the SBR, we will show this and, uh, you know, and, and some application demos that are really not going in, you know, in, in just showing a stream benchmark thing. It's uh, showing, you know, other useful thing that such systems can be used for, so... All right. Well, good. Well, yeah. we'll, I will be sure to stop by and see what's up yeah. with you guys. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, well Einar, hey, uh, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Well, thank you, Rich. Uh, looking forward to meet you again in the ISC. You betcha. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.